Pat as a as a CEO. Yeah. Because right now we're having a conversation with a certified badass fighter, UFC yeah. heavyweight champion. Boom, there he is. But you're a CEO. You run a company with how many thousands of general uh, independent contractors? Sure. Just like he's an independent yeah. contractor. He's an employee of UFC. Put yourself in Dana White's shoes as the CEO, as the yeah. person that's bringing the brand together. Yeah. And now you're Dana White and you're, you're sitting here talking with the Francis Naganos of the world, the Conor McGregor's of the world, the John Joneses of the world. How do you process what Dana is going through as a CEO saying, sorry, Francis, here's what we're willing to do. Here's what we're not willing to do through the mind of a CEO. Well, first of all, UFC is not UFC without Dana White, period. Whether people like this guy or not, it doesn't matter. I have so much respect for the guy. He has Fact. got a very hard job, yep. hands down. True. So to me, mm -hmm. whatever they're paying Dana, they're not paying him enough, period. That's a... That's not a $20 million a year guy. He's worth three fifty, four hundred, whatever the payout was when WME bought him at $3.5 billion. I think he was a 10% guy. Maybe it diluted a little bit. He got $300 million. Dana's a $50 million a year guy. He needs to make that money, period. That's that guy, okay? Maybe I would even vouch for him being a $100 million guy. Some people may disagree. That's that. So let's set Dana aside. Mm -hmm. Let's set Dana's value aside. You don't find people like Dana. Dana's a once-in-a-lifetime you know, generation type of a promoter and a guy like a commissioner. So you put David Stern there. You put even Godel that's not like, but he is mm -hmm. getting the money for the right guys there. There's only few people like him there, right? Okay, so now let's set that part aside. The next part is, I, I, I don't know. I mean, if you got 48% as the EBITDA, give or take, their margins are 35 to 50%. You got the margins to be able to afford to. If they get what the margin the of what? margins the EBITDA. are EBITDA, their EBITDA, their EBITDA margins are very high. They make very profit. They make a lot of profit. Who? Very profitable. UFC. You say how much? Forty-eight percent is the number we saw when we looked at the reports. Forty-eight percent. Forty-eight percent. Explain EBITDA real quick. Just yeah. If you if you have to look at the margins, it's thirty-five to forty-eight percent. We can. Look, it's public no, information. No, it's, no, no, no. You're saying no, it's no. higher. You mean what the UFC is make of the, or the fighter? No, 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 not fighter. What UFC makes? Oh, yeah, what UFC, not what you make. So, for example, your fight uh, with Ghani, uh, what uh, did you make? You made a half a million. The margin, um, pay the statistic that's going on now, like they make between eighty to eighty-five percent. They eighty-five. Yes, they made between. I, I, but what I'm the number I looked at is I looked at their their financials where it shows forty eight percent is. So let's just say you do a dollar, they're making they're keeping forty eight cents. That's the margins. No, but not on the fights. This is after employees, staff, home office, compliance, lawyers, legal, all of that. Maybe not on the events they put, but I mean the whole organization on the amount of money they. You can see their balance where, statement where, too. Where, where do you find it? It's public information. It's not hard to find. It's a formula. Yeah. Earnings before, no. yeah. uh, uh, what, a depreciation, int uh, interest, uh, mm. and amortization, EBITDA? Taxes. Taxes, yes. so, yeah. But, but the point is they have room to pay more. They have room to pay more. So let me ask you, the, the strategy you see, because even for somebody like you, you may say, well, I want to follow this guy's playbook to get paid what I believe I'm worth. Who do you think has used the best strategy in UFC to make the most money outside of Connor? Uh, it's really hard to f use a strategy in the UFC. Uh, I think the way that the business is set is set up, like they pay they pay you whatever they want to pay you. They let you pretend that you're negotiating while you're not negotiating, because either way, you're staying in the contract. Like you will have a uh, let's say forty months, forty months contract. By the by twenty months, they will come to negotiate a little bit more money. If you say yes, yeah, then they are giving you a new forty months, which means they start over because of that little, because of the money that they added. But because uh, by that time, your value is like maybe two or three times what they are offering, mm -hmm. you know. But, I mean, you're kind of like broke, you're struggling, and then uh, you're seeing your next fight, okay, 50,000, uh, you have to pay this and pay that and get away with maybe 20,000, and you have to uh, pay your loan and all the stuff, and they have a new contract, 100,000. It's really hard to turn that down when you're in that position, Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, even though you know that 
that's not your value, but you see, you're cornered. You're money. cornered almost. You're cornered. So then let me let me ask this this other question. Then, then, and I think every I, and I think everybody uh, in the UFC being in that position. That's they always have a step ahead. So it's what if you go on strike? I mean, you just no, you don't you don't want to do that because that's not the right strategy. Okay, uh, you can go on strike. You can, if you want to say that, go ahead and finish your thought. Yeah. Well, no, I was just gonna say you had the MLB strike, the NFL strike. Yeah. It's not the best way, but if you're backed into a corner, what other option no, do you have? I don't think that's the strategy. What do you mean go on strike? Like he's saying, you fifty of you guys say I'm not fighting until you pay me better. That's what he's saying going on a strike. Protest. Yeah. Protest. The top guys in the UFC say, we're not going to fight. We're not going to do any events. We're not going to do anything okay. until you meet what, we, what we're asking for. Okay. So this is the thing. Because you were struggling, you were expecting your fight for the $50,000, yeah. which, is, which is what a lot of people uh, in the UFC, they do, and even for less than that. And they have uh, even borrow money for... Uh, finance their training camp yeah. or whatever so they are expecting that money to pay back and if you tell this guy to go on strike why he has a fifty thousand dollar coming up who can like save him from the guillotine like release his neck a little bit come on twelve thousand dollars is a lot of money you're about to piss off francis bro you're about I to mean, get knocked out no, over no, here trying to go on no strike. it's not it's not me i'm just yeah. trying to explain you how he works so yeah. Therefore, nobody really, a lot of people will not go on strike. Not because the USA has the power to cut you. I'm going on strike. Oh, really? You're doing that? You're it's out. That's not the right move. No, you're doing that? Yeah. You're out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then you don't even have that 50000 anymore. What next? So a lot of fighters, they don't want to compromise that because that's only what they get. You know, mm -hmm. They don't have a saving. They live day by day, fight fight and that's why like when they don't fight they go they go dry yeah you know? so for me what i think about is how you can add so the game plan what connor did connor has a drink proper 12 they sell for 600 million i don't know what percentage he owned a third of it he got a couple hundred million dollars and he was able to get a fight to be sponsored by proper 12 so his drinks out that he always sits there so there mean that means there is some way to Leverage your brand. So maybe a Francis Ngannou may not be a, you know, get sponsorships from Nike or Adidas, but maybe your camp is going to come out with a product that you're going to say, hey, let me build equity around my product and let me leverage UFC to increase the value of this product that I have. And maybe I'll have an exit of 50 million or 100 million or 300 million dollars. Maybe. And that's what um, I'm sure that's what uh, everybody, almost everybody in the UFC is doing. Because you, everybody, uh, at that point, you understand that you need another source of income. But uh, not everybody has a chance to be in that position and to get things work that it's way. True. You're right. You know, uh, I might be under, I might be um, underestimate the sponsorship that I'm having today. Not underestimate, but believe that I could have better. But there is a lot of people that are just dreaming to have what I'm having as far as sponsorship because they don't even have that. You know, so they have even less power, not even to negotiate, even just to talk about it. Francis, are you getting more money from sponsorships than fights right now? Yeah. Okay. Is it, is it four, <laughs> five, ten times more? Uh -huh. Is it ten times more? Um, not yet? Not yet. Okay. Got it. It could be. Yeah. <laughs> I, like, can, can I hire, like, let's just say if I'm a company, can I hire you to do a commercial on TV? Can I do that? Yeah. Okay. So then there is. So, so then it means, then that means that there's an opportunity to have better managers to manage talent to get things on TV. If you enjoyed the short clip, click over here to watch another short clip. And if you want to watch the entire episode, the entire podcast, click here.